Thank you for taking time to learn more about the impact of trauma, mental health concerns, and substance use on students. We hope this informative presentation provides you with further knowledge and strategies to best support your student. Our first focus of today's presentation is trauma. According to Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration, also known as SAMHSA, trauma is extreme, chronic, or toxic stress that overwhelms a person's ability to cope. It results in feeling vulnerable, helpless, and afraid. Trauma can result from one event or a series of events. The experience is subjective, meaning two people can go through the same event that leads to one feeling traumatized and the other not. It will depend on protective factors the individual has, as well as the makeup of the person, such as age, gender, race, or other contributing factors. As we interact with others, it is important that we respect their lens and experiences. Perception is reality. Even if we experienced the same trauma, our perception of the event is not the same. It is also possible that some people may not recognize an experience as traumatic but their body can identify the toxic stress and the trauma realization may come out later. Trauma often interferes with relationships, self-regulation, and fundamental beliefs about oneself, others, and one's place in the world. Significant research has been conducted about ACEs, which are adverse childhood experiences. Results have demonstrated the positive correlation between the number of ACEs and the risk of negative health outcomes. Some negative outcomes connected to ACEs include alcoholism or alcohol abuse, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, depression, financial stress, suicide attempts, adolescent pregnancy, and poor academic achievement. When the fight flight freeze response is activated, it may look like acting out, acting silly, or arguing. It could look like skipping class, seeming to sleep, hiding or wandering, or it could be refusing to answer, giving a blank look, or feeling unable to move or act. Help your student build resiliency to improve their ability to recover from stress inducing experiences. This includes encouraging a supportive relationship with at least one caring adult, regular physical exercise, stress reduction practices, and opportunities to practice executive functioning, self-regulation, and overall skill building. Coping skills can be an effective way to self-regulate. This slide provides links to various possible resources parents can utilize. The focus of today's presentation is overall mental health. Mental health is one's physical, emotional, social, and psychological well-being. It helps determine how one handles stress, relates to others, and makes choices. Mental health disorders can involve changes in thinking, mood, and or behavior. Mental health conditions are common and can be serious, but are also treatable. Many people are able to manage their symptoms and recover. It's important to care about mental health as stringently as one focuses on other aspects of health. Negative outcomes of unaddressed mental health needs can be significant. Mental health concerns are very common. 20% of youth struggle with mental health issues. Though common, stigma often keeps people from seeking the help they need. It's also important to note that youth suicide rates from ages 15 to 24 have increased nationally and suicide remains the second leading cause of death among 10 to 24 year olds here in Virginia. We can help address these concerning statistics by caring about mental health. Anxiety is a common mental health concern in adolescents. Emotional symptoms include feelings of apprehension or dread, feeling tense and jumpy, restlessness, anticipating the worst or intense worry, difficulty concentrating, frequent crying, anger, or irritability. Physical symptoms can include pounding or racing heart, shortness of breath, upset stomach sweating, tremors and twitches, headaches, fatigue, insomnia. It is important to note that everyone experiences anxiety from time to time. 
Anxiety may need to be treated when it interferes with daily functioning. Depression is another common condition. Symptoms can include feeling sad, hopeless, or irritable most of the time, not wanting to do or enjoy doing fun things, showing changes in eating, sleep, or energy patterns, having a hard time paying attention, feeling worthless, useless, or guilty, showing self-injury or destructive behaviors. And these symptoms occur for at least two weeks or more. How can you know if your student is struggling? It's important to be aware of common behavioral indicators, such as seeming quiet or withdrawn and isolating, speaking maybe more often or less often or more rapidly, changes in appetite, energy, or sleep, an unwillingness to start or finish assignments or meet commitments, falling grades, restlessness, fidgeting, hyperactivity, disrupting class or acting out, being more angry or irritable, and crying over seemingly minor things. It is also important to regularly ask and check in about how your student is feeling. Create open lines of communication and be willing to talk about your concerns. Encourage mind-body wellness, social skills, and coping skills. Refer students to resources such as the school counselors, life counselor, school social worker, school psychologist or administration, and child study or IEP teams. Find professional help when needed. Consult with community health providers such as pediatricians, family doctors, or licensed mental health providers. Another concern amongst teens is substance use. When a student becomes addicted to a particular substance, substance use disorder may be diagnosed. This happens when they continue to use the substance despite experiencing symptoms and problems in their daily lives. They may withdraw from friends and family, show sudden changes in behavior, engage in risky behaviors, feel the need for a substance to be able to function, have cravings for the substance, develop a high tolerance or have withdrawal symptoms, and neglect other parts of their life because of the substance. Cannabis use among youth can be particularly dangerous. The CDC reports marijuana can have permanent effects on the developing brain when use begins as a teenager, especially when used regularly and heavily. Teens who use marijuana are more likely to quit school and not obtain a college degree. They are at increased risk of mental health issues, impaired driving, and addiction. In addition, many young people are now experiencing increased potency in marijuana laced with other harmful synthetic drugs like fentanyl, which can cause many medical issues and even death. Vaping is inhaling or exhaling aerosol through an e-cigarette or other vape device. Even when a device says zero nicotine, it likely still contains nicotine since vapes are not regulated. Vaping nicotine is highly addictive. When heated, this increases the level of toxic chemicals. There has been an increased number of vaping products containing cannabis and THC. A lot of times this is unknown to the user and can lead to the need for immediate medical attention. As a result of vaping, reports of serious lung illnesses and deaths has increased. Vaping solutions and aerosols contain toxic heavy metals, formaldehyde, diacetyl, and other cancer-causing substances. Students struggling with substances may display these behavioral symptoms. Decrease in grades or performance, glassy bloodshot eyes, unique odors on clothes or body, decreased or increased focus and attention, changes in alertness, decreased motivation, changes in behavior and habits, slurred speech, body movement spasms, staggered walking, falling asleep, withdrawal from others, and reports about other possible use. If concerned about your student, contact the pediatrician, family doctor, or mental health professional to seek assistance for your child. If you believe a student has a substance use issue, contact the school and life counselor to seek possible assistance. Help your student develop protective factors, such as family and peer relationships, friends who encourage each other to do well in school and in life, 
parents who tell their children that they do not approve of drug misuse, parental and adult involvement in students' life, school and work, anti-drug policies and laws, success in school performance and positive goals for the future, extracurricular activities, faith, spirituality, and wellness-based resources, and resistance and refusal strategies. Encourage your students to utilize resistance and refusal strategies, such as having a pre-planned phrase to say no, making a joke, walking away, change the subject, ignore the suggestion, or offer an alternative, have an exit strategy, have a code word with parent or guardian when you need a ride, and other ways to be able to get out of an unwanted situation. Further research and resources are available online. Check out the links on this slide if you are interested in more information. Local and national resources include Blue Ridge Behavioral Healthcare, Family Services of Roanoke Valley, healthcare providers such as the pediatrician or family doctor, Partnership for Community Wellness, the Suicide Prevention Helpline, the Crisis Helpline, Connect, Respond, and 211. Thank you for viewing this presentation. Please reach out to your student's school with any further questions or concerns.